Good afternoon, everybody that showed up. Even those that didn't show up are missing a lot. So we're going to start with this. Why are we here this afternoon is to show you how to do curbless showers on plywood floors the easiest way possible. Uh, my name is Joseph Orlbach. I work for a company called uh, Rapid Recess. And uh, we are one trick pony. Uh, all we do is we manufacture steel brackets that allow you to recess your plywood floor down between floor joists to be able to create curbless showers on plywood floors easily without cutting into the floor joists. Here it is. Here are the steel brackets. And here is your original floor of the bathroom. And now you have a step, 11 16 of an inch from here to the top of the recessed floor. Now you have enough elevation difference that you can create a pitch from the outside of the shower into the drain without having any step whatsoever. You can install completely flush tile at the entry to a shower. I know it was very difficult before, but now it's possible. I'm going to go over a few slides in the beginning of my presentation here. This is what we usually hear when a homeowner uh, wants to create a, or wants contractors to install curbless showers. Difficult, expensive, takes too long, and all these things. On plywood floors, yes, it used to be true. Not anymore because now we have a system that does it for us, regardless of spacing of the joists, uh, construction of the floor joists, you can do solid sawn lumber, you can do eye joists, you can do trusses, whatever your joists are made of, you can fit it there. Exactly the same way. So when people are running crews, and a crew has one of these uh, in their van, they are not coming back and saying, you know what, it was a different situation, I couldn't do it today, maybe tomorrow. No, it gets done the same exact way this, uh, on any type of floor joist, on any type of floor. So that's the consistency and that's our biggest advantage that uh, any crew can do it every time the same way. So let me show you this. Probably all of you sitting here know that already that uh, curbless showers are requested more and more. How's did this survey where they asked people what uh, was the most uh, what's the most desirable thing you would have in your master shower? First was rainfall shower head. Second was dual shower. Third, 21% responded curbless shower. Never been done before because uh, curbless showers were not in the, on their minds. Now, in 2018, it's 21%. How many people do you think it's going to be in 2020? And uh, in the industry, there's very few people that know how to install curbless showers correctly. Not even correctly, how to install curbless showers. And even fewer that know how to do it correctly and without the expense of cutting into the floor joists, doing the pen liner, and all these things. So, this is how it was done before. Sistering joists, dropping the plywood. Yes, on solid sawn lumber, it is possible. But is it possible on uh, trusses, and is it possible on eye joists? No. So, that's why we came out with these brackets. When you have Floor joists close together, where you cannot get there with a nail gun or a screw gun, it's even impossible on solid sawn lumber. This is what we are proposing. Use our brackets, drop that floor down 11 16 of an inch from the original floor. That gives you enough drop 
to create a perfectly curbless shower with a 2% uh, drop between the outside and the uh, and, uh, drain itself. So, what these pictures show is how it was done on eye joists when they are close together does not really matter because we are doing everything from above. We are doing nothing from the side. That's the most important part to take home. So, since there are so few of us here, guys, if you want to come up here and have a look at it, how it all works, I would be more than happy to have you here. If not, uh, our booth number is 4032 for the ones that want to see it there and talk to us about it. If you, uh, do you guys have any questions about this? What to do, how to do, when to do it, and what the advantages are, disadvantages? I cannot speak much of disadvantages because I'll be fired, but uh, advantages I can cover. That's not laughable matter. You know, that's, and in this company, if I get fired from home, I get fired from work and vice versa. So my boss is my wife. Yes? Oh, yeah. See, that's one thing that I forgot to cover. And uh, sizes. Sizes and how it's sold. The whole kit, what we do with that is we sized it up for 25 square foot shower. So five by five, uh, six by four, whatever it is. Because usually when you have more than two and a half foot uh, run, you're running out of space, depth. So that's why we sized it that way. And uh, every kit comes with 10 of the main brackets that go over the floor joists and 30 parameter brackets that go at the entry and wherever the framing is. It also comes with special fasteners. Those are wood to metal fasteners. There's 160 of them in a kit. What these fasteners do, I know we can say they're extra special. Yes, they are. Because trial and error, about, we tried about 30 of them when people told us these are the best fasteners in the business. No, this is the only one that passed. Because what it does is when you're going through the plywood into the bracket, most of them were doing this, that once it hit the uh, steel, it was lifting up the plywood around it. No, that's why we have the wings. And then what happened if for, a, for some reason it didn't lift up the plywood, what happened when you have the core, uh, thread too coarse, it strips the thread on the screw. If you have the thread too fine, it strips the threads inside that uh, steel. So it has to be perfect right here. That's why we provide everything in one kit that people don't come up with their own solution on site. Thank you for that question because that's one thing that I forgot. I forgot many things, but this was the main one. So 25 square feet in a box, worst case scenario. That means that you have an extra joist there or you have them too close together, or they're running the wrong way, or they are cross running. So, worst case scenario, 25 square feet. Anything else? Yes, four foot lengths. Four foot lengths. These are five inches. And uh, one more thing that I forgot is, when we are doing parameter at the framing, one per bay. Because they are, you are going to have 12, 12 and a half inches left here. So one per bay, at, when you're running them at the entry to the shower, two per bay or two per linear foot. Depends on which way they go. If, they go. if the floor joists go parallel to the entry, two per foot. If they go perpendicular to the entry, two per bay. And another, just a technical piece, is 
if you have floor joists running parallel to the entry, your sharp end ends usually not on top of a floor joist. It usually ends somewhere in the middle. So what you do, you take that plywood out all the way to the next available floor joist and then fill back in with three-quarter plywood. The easiest way to do it. Because otherwise it's too soft at the entry. You want to step on top of the floor joist and then fill in in between. That's my spiel. Oh. Drain locations, excellent question. Um, didn't cover that one. As you guys know, uh, linear drains are extremely popular right now, but extremely difficult to do curbless on these. Because every single linear drain has a depth of the drain body. And they should be installed at the back wall parallel to the entry that way. So if you do that, suddenly you have to drop that floor even more and if you have floor joists running perpendicular to the length of the drain, you cannot do it. There's only one drain on, on the market right now that doesn't have a depth to it, and that's wall drain from Quick Drain USA. Rest of the drains have a depth that you would have to account for when you are doing that. Uh, point drains, different story because they are so small that they can fit in between the uh, floor joists, so if we recess it enough, then we have something. But uh, what we have here we all know what uh, this sharp pan is, correct? So I don't even have to mention it. And it fits perfectly. Because on the parameter, it's the thinnest sharp pan on the market right now. Great compressive strength and easy to install. So once we have that, if we have a point drain, usually in the center, then we are not struggling with the, uh, with the depth of installation. If we have the point drain somewhere where it's not at the center, then we are struggling because we have more of a, either we don't uh, comply with the code pitch of 2% or uh, we have the sharp end too thick. But then my recommendation is, uh, you know, choose the sharp end that's, that fits the best and make it that way. It's, uh, it's going to be much, much easier on you and on your guys in the field if, if we do it this way. Because I'm trying to find out if we can do it with mud, but as you know, mud has to have a thickness of sort that the manufacturer of the mud has to uh, write, sign off on and uh, we don't have it yet. So if we want to do it the thinnest possible way, let's do this. Let's make a thin sharp pan work and uh, with a point drain, or you can do a linear drain, wall drain from Quick Drain USA. You know, that one we tested extensively, and that's one going into my house. Anything else, guys? that I can pretend that I have answers to? All right. I don't want to bore you to death. Thank you for coming out. And uh, if you want to see more, uh, 4032 is our booth number. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.